A PowerPoint countdown timer is an effective way to display a countdown clock for meeting breaks, interactive exercises, or even the beginning of a speaking training or workshop session. To begin, create a new presentation in PowerPoint and insert a blank slide. In this case, I'll simply change the layout of this slide from a title slide to a blank one. Now this could be a presentation that's built from your organization template or based on one of the thousands of templates available online from PowerPoint. It all depends upon what kind of look you want it to have. You can edit the slide master or the slide design to customize the background as desired. For this one, I'll go to the design tab and simply change the format of the background and I'll make this blue. Also consider how you want to use the timer. Will it be only for one presentation? That is, you want this to be a standalone, or are you going to copy these slides into multiple presentations? So you might want to keep it real simple without a lot of formatting if you're copying into other presentations. Next, we'll go ahead and add a text box. So this is going to be where we show the numbers that will be part of that countdown. Now I'll start my timer from 10 minutes, but if you want something that's longer that could be edited, just start from whatever that might be, whether it's 20 minutes, 15 minutes, or even if you were looking at building something that is a countdown for seconds. Now this is way too small. Simply format this and any way that is helpful for you, we can select it, right click, use our ribbon, and I'm going to be fairly aggressive here, make this maybe 200 point. It could even be larger than that. So this is something to experiment. Sometimes 250 or even 300 will work for you. And uh, I also want this to be white so it will stand out a little bit better. And here I can use my little mini toolbar, but these are options that are also available in the ribbon. So we want to probably center this and find a good position for that. If you have grid lines in place, you can find it a little easier to see that. And then we would continue by adding the text that we want to display. And then that might be just another text box that says minutes left, seconds remaining. You might add images to this. That is, there's a lot of different possibilities in terms of how you want to start this. So here I have the start of my timer. I've added, applied a little bit more formatting to this so that it looks the way that I want. Now, how do we create the timer to move from, let's say, 10 minutes to nine minutes automatically? The key here is to work with transitions and specifically advancing slides forward. You'll find this on the right-hand side of the ribbon tab. The default here is that we could advance through a mouse click but we want to make sure that it is a set increment. So we'll add to that, simply click here after, and this could be a minute, it could be a second, or whatever time increment you want to build into your timer. For this, I'll make this one minute. That's all I need to do to set up this slide. And I'm gonna add some movement, and this is completely optional. Keep in mind the timer can be very basic, or could be customized with a lot of movement, animation, colors, images, whatever you'd like to build into it. For this one, I'll add a transition. Transitions are simply animation to introduce a slide. For this, I'll choose push. And let's change that effect options direction to be from the right. Now, if this is a standalone timer, this first slide wouldn't really matter if it had the transition, but we're going to duplicate this slide. And it might also be something that we copy into a presentation, which we'll also look at in this training. So now we have it set up to advanced forward automatically after a minute, it has a transition. All we have to do now is simply duplicate that work. There are a few ways to do duplicate. The easiest is the duplicate command. One way to get to that is to simply right click on the slide and choose duplicate slide. I like instead the keyboard shortcut control D. Now we'll edit this number here. For consistency of appearance, I'll keep the zero in there, but once again, it's very flexible. And then we can continue to duplicate. For this, I'll simply do a control D and keep doing that and, and count these off and start 
editing these. So for instance, for this third one, I want that to be eight minutes and we would then continue the process. Repeat as many times as you want the sequential slides for the countdown timer. This is what my timer looks like from the slide sorter. And I've edited each of those slides. Here I have my transition. I can see that we have a one minute increment here and the effect that's set up, that push. It could be a fade or other transitions or none at all. The key part though here is that we have that one minute increment. Now I've added a little extra here and that is once I'm down to one minute, I now have changed this then so that it is only going to last for 30 seconds before it advances to the next slide. Now I have another slide set up with 30 seconds remaining. So I've edited some of that content here again. It is only going to sit there for 30 seconds before it automatically transitions. Now we could always force the transition by just hitting hit enter or clicking with the mouse. That was one of the other properties that was available in that transition. The final parts here then is to have a slide that says we're out of time. <laughs> now this particular one I have set just for 10 seconds so that it just displays for a short period of time and then if this, for instance, was a break for a meeting or a training, I would say time is up, let's continue, or whatever you'd like to say. The flexibility, the creativity is completely up to you. You might even add a blank black slide at the end if you'd like to, but this particular one would sit here and display for a minute. And so if I don't want to have that move at all, I'll simply select this. And then under transitions, I'm going to turn off that advanced option. And here is that other choice I mentioned on mouse click. Now you've seen the steps so that you can actually build your own countdown timer. If you'd like to download examples of PowerPoint timers that you can use, head to thesoftwarepro.com slash timers. You'll also find the link in this description. You can improve your countdown timer by experimenting with different slide backgrounds and as we saw transitions, animation, do you want different font color? You still want it to be easy to read, but here I'm simply using one of the templates that's available online, Digital Blue Tunnel, so it makes it a little bit more visually interesting. Here's another one that's just built off of an available template. Here's another tip. And I find this is really helpful because not only do I speak at conferences, but I also deliver training sessions that might have one or more breaks built into them. And so I want to be able to easily launch this. And so one of the tips is that although this is saved right now as a PPTX file, it's just a standard PowerPoint presentation. If I save it as a PowerPoint show, then I can actually then launch this without being in PowerPoint. So here's how that works. Now we can get to save several different ways, but I'll choose file, save as, and I can give that then a name that I want for that. I will also change the file type here to PowerPoint show. When it's a PowerPoint show, the presentation can be on your desktop, which is where I prefer to put it, or it could be within a folder, but you don't have to launch PowerPoint. And when you escape out of it, it just simply returns back to the previous location. And in this case, then I'm going to go ahead and move it to or put it on my desktop. And let's look at that for just a moment. So on my desktop, you can see I actually <laughs> do work with this. And because it is now on my desktop, this file can be quickly launched. And so for instance, if I simply double click on it, it is launched, but now I can hit escape and I am then back to my desktop. Is that something that would also help you to really take advantage of your timers? What if you want to launch a countdown timer directly from a presentation? In this case, then, you'll want to copy those slides. And that's why I mentioned before that you might want to keep the design very simple and not apply any formatting. That way, the timer can just come in and take on the formatting and appearance of that presentation. 
To bring in those slides, you'd first of all launch the primary presentation, and then we'll move to that countdown timer presentation. For this, I'll simply do a Control A to select all, and then Control C for copy. You could also right click for copy, and I want to be able to paste these in. Back at my primary presentation, we could do this a couple different ways. I could simply right click between those slides or go to the slide sorter. Keep in mind too, we also have our cut, copy, and paste actions also in the home tab of the ribbon if that's your preference. From here, I'll simply right click and here are my paste options. Now, if you want to maintain the original formatting of that countdown timer, then this is the option you pick, keep source formatting. The default for paste, if we simply did a paste command without this right click or paste options, is that it would take on the destination theme. So try that first, and if it doesn't work, then undo, and then use the source formatting. It all depends upon how highly formatted it is to begin with, and so that's helpful then, as I mentioned before, to really set your intention. From here now, I have that timer. You can see it more easily in this presentation. If, and if I only needed a five minute break, then of course I could simply delete the other slides. Another way to duplicate these slides is with the reuse slides option, which is found under the home tab or also under the new slide option. And my preference in this case is to do a copy paste because reuse slides works best when you're only copying in a few individual slides rather than a large number of slides. Let's see how this works. I can launch the presentation in a couple different ways. The F5 function key, if I wanted to do Shift F5, that would be from the current slide. We can go to the slide show and say from beginning, and you'll also have options that are down in the status bar for this. And so I'll simply launch this, and I will go through it real quickly. Certainly not the pace that we would typically have in a presentation. Here then starts our timer, and then after a minute has passed, it would move to the next slide. And we now have the notice one minute remaining, 30 seconds remaining, and now we're done and this would then display. So that gives us the option then to continue whether or not you have this as part of a larger presentation or as a standalone. How can you enhance your presentations and improve your breaks and workshop exercises by adding a PowerPoint countdown timer to your next presentation? For more tips on being productive with PowerPoint, head to thesoftwarepro.com slash PowerPoint. If this training was helpful, please like and comment on this video and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.